Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. Ryan Patrick Murphy here, and I'm not drinking anything. My glass is empty. Um, it's a special Homebrew Wednesday, because it's Frackin' Friday! Yeah, it's late. I don't really have anything... To, I don't, guess I don't have too much to talk about. Um, heck, I don't even really have any homebrew to drink right now, I don't think. But, uh, the Ailtoberfest, the Mocktoberfest, is it's, it's ready for secondary this weekend. I did get a little sample of it. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I can't say that I would know that it was... It wasn't an Oktoberfest, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, I'm going to let it secondary. It, it seemed a little hot on the end, you know, kind of that alcohol flavor. A little bit at the end. Um, so I'm going to let it sit for at least a month in secondary. We'll just see what happens there. Um, other than that, uh, I am getting a, a, well, hopefully getting a new CO2 tank. I was hoping to get it at least by today so I go get it filled, but I'm low on CO2. So I didn't keg the dryer stouts. Now I just have this empty keg. It's still in the fridge getting refrigerated. But, um, uh, so that's that. I, I, I have a feeling I'm not going to have my stout ready for St. Patrick's Day, which will kind of suck. I may uh, try to hope what's left in the tank will be able to get it carbonated and maybe go get a, a CO2 charger or something just to get it flowing. So tomorrow I'll probably try to keg it because I need to get... Uh, a secondary fermenter open so I can put the Altoberfest in there. Um, now, since it is Friday, and normally I would release a Ryan Taze beer tonight or today, um, you know, normally my homebrew Wednesday, I don't think my homebrew Wednesdays have ever been this late. I know they've been late on Thursday, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Ryan Taze beer here too for you. So we'll stay beer late. It just won't be homebrew. It's an energy drink. No, I'm just kidding. This is Surly Bender. I've never had anything from Surly. Uh, I've seen Northern Brewer has uh, kits. Uh, clone kit. Well, I don't know if they're clone kits. They have the Surly name on them. Uh, for I, I believe they have for Bender and Cynic. So I went to Bender. Uh, I think it's a oatmeal brown ale. So let me just read it. Here's what happens when substance meets smooth. This oatmeal brown ale defies traditional categories. Bender begins crisp and lightly hoppy, complemented by the velvety sleekness oats deliver. Belgian and British malts usher in cascades of cocoa, coffee, caramel, and hints of vanilla and cream. An easy drinking ale with many layers of satisfaction. These things come in a four pack. A four pack. And it's ten dollars. Holy crap. Then, you know, they had a six, uh, six pack, but it wasn't cold. But the six pack, they wanted $20. It was a variety pack. Right, so I had all the, the six different beers, I guess. And they wanted 20 bucks, and it's like, I'd much rather buy two four packs for that much and have a couple extra beers. Man, I couldn't believe how much that was. So I just went with this early bender. Got a four pack of it. Hopefully it's good. Let's open it up. I don't know if I've ever opened a can on Ryan Taves beer, but hey. It's Friday the 13th, am I right? <sighs> Beer for a glass from a can. That's what it says up here. I thought about drinking it right out of the can. But we'll put it in my trusty glass here. Oh. Probably should have poured that a little better. Holy crap! <laughs> Ooh, I can smell it. Oh, holy cow. Holy shit. Wow. So let me give you a better look at that. I know the light's not great in here. Um, so, surly beer. You know, it's a can. Now let's look at the what we came here to see. Wow, look at that. That is a pretty good looking beer. Uh, I don't have my phone with me, so I can't even shine a light. I'm totally not prepared. That's just the kind of week it's been. Got a nice big head on there. Partially probably because I didn't pour it with crap, but it is sticking around. 
So. Ooh. That's kind of a sweet, almost kind of vanilla scent to it. That's all I got there. I, had, I don't know if that's helping the aroma or not. I can see a little light coming through. It is pretty dark. It's kind of reddish, brownish. I mean, it's brown ale. The light can get through. It is clean looking. Wow. That's pretty good. That's interesting. Um, we get a little bit of bitterness there. D did get that, but it's not overwhelming. Hmm. I don't know what to say. I get kind of the roastiness. I don't know what the, that's one of the things they said, but I get something more roasty coffee I guess but I don't really get much of the other stuff and maybe it's just you know someone with a more uh, sensitive palate would be able to pick those up but but it's not like an overpowering coffee you know I mean it's not it's just a little roastiness I get there just a little hint of it and maybe just hint, you know notes when they say notes I mean it's kind of there but it is pretty good um, I think I'd have to go to four out of five. Maybe even four and a half. Would be an easy drinker though, I think, too. I'm gonna go four and a half on this. It's, it's kinda different, but I like it. I've had brown nails before, but I don't know that I've had an oatmeal brown. But this is pretty good. Um, well, I guess when I brewed the John Palmer's 11s as modified, I think that had oats in it, maybe. Yeah, that had oats. I guess that'd be technically an oatmeal brown, but I think this is better. Um, but cheers. We'll see you next week. Hopefully. Maybe. Probably.